obviously there is a lot of talk about Julia coming into WWE. We all saw the segment. Uh, we saw her confront Chelsea Green and Roxanne Perez. We just talked a lot about how there's a lot of trust in Julia. But the real question is, what is the long-term plan for Julia? What is the long-term success for Julia? And I, I, I find this to be a very interesting question because I know a lot of people are already starting to hate on Julia. And that's just how the internet wrestling community works. Like... Anytime somebody is becoming successful and it's not in the company that they want, people are obviously going to be bothered and they're going to be outspoken. And this is the this is the part of the wrestling industry I absolutely do not respect. A lot of people are preying on the downfall of Julia. And I'm here to say that uh, if you're one of those people doing that, you're not going to be happy because Julia is going to be on main roster at some point within a year or two. A hundred percent. The The reality is Julia just needs to learn the American system. And the cool thing about Julia coming into WWE and going specifically to NXT is that she could figure it out in real time. And I think a lot of people do tend to forget that is something that could be done, but there is a lot that could be done in real time. She is going to learn how to work the camera in front of the crowds. She's going to learn how to interact with the audience. She's going to learn how to have different facial expressions at different times. But the thing about her is that she's very polished. She is very polished in the ring. And I think a lot of times what, what, is, what is happening right now on social media is that a lot of people are upset with the fact that they automatically assume that WWE is going to make her tone down her in-ring style. And that could be true to a certain extent. But I think even if they do have her tone down her in-ring style, I don't think it's going to be an issue. I think people really do forget how important aura and presentation is. Sometimes what ends up happening is that people have really good in-ring ability and they lack the presentation that is needed to be perceived in a higher light. And I don't want to say this because it sounds so nasty and it sounds like it's hurting people's feelings and it's not a personal thing, but really what it is, it comes down to whether you simply have it or you don't. And I think... Julia is getting backlash on social media because wrestling fans that don't want her in WWE are obviously mad about that. But the reality is, long term, I think WWE has something incredibly special in Julia. And this is how I think it's going to go. In Chicago, on the CW debut, Julia will defeat Roxanne Perez. I Make no mistake about it. I believe that they will hand her the title. And I do not know who the hell is going to take the belt off of her. But I have a very strong feeling that Julia is going to be booked exactly like Asuka. The only difference that I think will actually end up happening is that Julia will get called up to the main roster first. Faster than Asuka did. And it's a little bit different now that Triple H, Paul Levesque runs the WWE. Because with Vince McMahon, we know it's a little bit different. But it's really important that we acknowledge that Triple H, when he's ready, when he sees that Julia has learned the American style of doing things, I think Triple H will call her up to the main roster. But I think she is going to be booked exactly like Asuka. And if I had to guess, Shawn Michaels already knows that is mandatory. And the good thing about that is that is how you create stars. Now, keep in mind, Asuka came into WWE. She came into NXT. She absolutely dominated. Not a lot of people knew who Asuka was prior to coming to WWE. Unless you were a real hardcore fan, most people typically didn't know who she was. So when she came into NXT and absolutely dominated and did all of these great things, what we all saw unfold in front of our eyes was simply dominance. And we basically knew that the way she was booked in NXT was not going to 100% translate into the main roster. So Julia is in a little bit of a better situation because Vince McMahon is not in this company. Vince McMahon is not running this company. Kevin Dunn isn't running this company. The new regime is going to handle Julia in ways that I think a lot of fans are going to be really pissed off that their favorite wrestling promotion did not be able to get her. But long term, I do believe Julia will be a massive success. But I think it all starts with Roxanne. Now... We know that Delta's coming in. We know that Stephanie Vickers is coming in. We know that WWE is building up so many different women in NXT. We know that they're working in 
uh, a partnership with TNA. There is a lot of big time matchups that they can do. And I think really one of the best parts about this for WWE is simply the fact that there is no shortages of great matches that will ultimately make Julia look good. And that's huge because that's exactly what they need to do. That's exactly what they need to do. They need to do those big time matchups to make people understand that this girl is going to be the future of the company. Now, I don't know how old Julia is. I didn't decide to, to you know, Google it before I went up li live. But I think if you're the WWE and you push Julia to the moon, you're doing something else that is really good for the for the brand of NXT, and that is you are having an opportunity being saved for Stephanie Vicker, Zeta Steel, Delta, uh, and whoever else they want to push. I think the more that they push Julia to the top and they cement her as the final boss of NXT's women's division, whoever beats her, it's almost like a passing of the torch type of moment. And so I got really excited when I saw Julia come out and attack Chelsea Green. I got really excited when I saw her confront Roxanne Perez, but I got excited because I'm starting to realize that WWE is laying out the plan right in front of us. AEW fans are mad about it. Stardom fans are mad about it. And I get it. I understand. But at the same time, too, wrestling fans should be less concerned about how a wrestler decides to go where they decide to go. They should be more concerned about other stuff because they have no personal attachment to the talent that are being utilized. And I just I find it so crazy how wrestling fans take it so personal. Julia will absolutely not fail in WWE. I wouldn't expect her to fail in WWE. And let's just call it what it is. When she gets up to the main roster, there are tons and tons and tons of matches they can do. So not only can Julia work against TNA talent, she can go back to Marigold as well. But then after she conquers NXT, she's going to go to the main roster and do it all over again. Guys, we're talking about building stars. Julia is somebody who came from Japan. Nobody really knew exactly who she was unless you were a hardcore fan. So the beauty of this now is the fact that she is going to go into the WWE system and WWE is going to talk about how great their performance center is at developing talent. And that's exactly what they want to do. And that's exactly how they're going to do it. Thank you for watching this clip from the Ango Show. If you guys want to watch the full episode, it's going to be somewhere on the screen over here. Don't forget, you could also tune in. I'm live Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, yeah, make sure you guys come check it out. Thanks for watching.